Supernovae Solo F, Guitar Hero's most iconic section. Most people in the community have played it, a lot have played it, some have hit every single note in it, and few people have truly mastered it. This video consists of the rise and fall of the section, and how it gained its popularity and then became one of the most hated sections. Guitar Hero, a rhythm game where the goal is to hit the notes on screen scrolling past the fretboard with a plastic guitar. Straightforward at the beginning, I'm sure everyone watching this has heard at least something about that game, whether that be having playing the game yourself as a kid with your friends, watching videos, maybe trying to get the infamous through the firing flames. No matter how, majority of people have heard of it or played it. A smaller percentage is aware that there is actually still a decent sized community of people who play the game, but most of us don't play Guitar Hero, we play Clone Hero. Clone Hero is basically exactly what the name sounds like, it's a clone of Guitar Hero. The textures are extremely similar to Guitar Hero Warriors of Rock, and its main purpose is to be a modern Guitar Hero that is focused on songs created and charted by the community, more so than the main game set lists. Back in the day when you wanted to get a custom song on Guitar Hero, it was way more complicated than it is on Clone Hero. On Clone Hero, you can customize the note color, the highway, the background, the possibilities are endless. It was created by Ryan Foster and launched into Alpha and became available to the public March 1st, 2017. The best part of it though, it was free and you could even play it with your keyboard. Over the years, more and more Guitar Hero players have switched to Clone Hero and as I'm making this video, the extreme majority of people that play any guitar related rhythm game play Clone Hero. But if I'm gonna talk about the switch to Clone Hero, then I'm gonna have to talk about the switch from Guitar Hero. So when you were playing Guitar Hero, it was usually on console and you would play with whatever guitar was made for that specific game usually. Like Guitar Hero 3, you would use maybe a Les Paul, maybe an Explorer, Guitar Hero 1 and 2, you would use an SG, that's what I mean by that. And when the main game started to die, the community first went to something called GH3 PC, so Guitar Hero 3 PC. It was basically a Clone Hero before Clone Hero existed. It was Guitar Hero 3 but with more PC support as in majority of people who played it were there to play custom songs. The guitars used on this game were mainly made for the Xbox 360, specifically the Explorer and the Les Paul, the Xbox 360 variant of the Les Paul. Um, the Les Paul required a dongle so that you could connect it to your PC though, um, however the Explorer was plug and play so you didn't need any like additional item. Uh, the reason I'm talking about this is because this guitar quote unquote meta carried into Clone Hero as well. The PS3 guitar latency was way too bad to play on for top level play and so were the Wii guitars due to you having to connect the Wii guitars via Bluetooth with the Wiimote, however there were also some adapters but they were not very good. The Xbox 360 controllers however, people were used to and had the best latency. This is what people thought. Introduce the RafNet adapter. This was an adapter for Wii guitars. The reason why this was so revolutionary is because people used the best guitar at the time and that guitar was 125 hertz pull rate which is an eight millisecond delay from like when you press a button and then it takes eight milliseconds for your game to register that um and sure that sounds like nothing eight milliseconds is very short but when you're trying to hit stuff like this your pull rate affects your gameplay a lot after looking around Reddit, Google, YouTube, Discord, I can't find anyone who knows the exact pull rate of Wii World Tour guitars versus a Wii Les Paul. However, they are extremely close and both are around 500 hertz. The Wii World Tour, I think, is around 50 hertz more than the Les Paul, but I could be wrong. I could not find 
any of the old charts. Which after downloading the RafNet software and lowering the milliseconds, you can play at a 2 millisecond delay rather than the 8 that was on the Explorer. It is very hard to determine who discovered the RafNet. I checked around the oldest post that I was able to find was from August 12, 2018 which funnily enough was an exact month prior to Supernovae being released, um, but we'll get into that in a little bit. It was a reddit post from a since deleted user in the clone hero reddit talking about their experience with the RafNet. I then looked through the official clone hero discord and the first instance of a RafNet being talked about there was a week after the reddit post. So in my firm belief, this random deleted redditor was the person who was the spark to a most likely never ending meta. The adapter kept gaining popularity and on November 23rd, 2018, the most popular CH YouTuber, Asai, made a video basically showcasing it. After that, it kept going on and on to gain popularity and eventually became the meta for all top players and even people just starting out on the game. Now that I've talked about the history of the game, I will talk about the very basics of playing the game just so you can get an understanding of how things that will be shown in this video are possible. First you have a guitar or keyboard if that's what you choose. There are 5 frets which are the colored buttons on the guitars, which in order are green, red, yellow, blue, orange. If a note enters your hit window, which is the timing area you have to hit the notes, you press a button correlated with it. There are three different types of notes in this game. Strum notes, which require you to strum when you're going to hit the note. Hammer-ons or hopos, which don't require you to strum. However, you must have a combo prior to hitting it or else you do need to strum. So basically, if you miss a note during a sequence of hammer-ons, you will need to strum the next note to regain your combo. Same if you miss a note right before the hopo. And the next type of note is a tap note. This is basically just a hammer-on slash hopo, but without the need to already have a combo and no strumming will ever be needed when hitting a tap note. Due to this section that I will be talking about in this video being basically just a tapping challenge, I will need to discuss alt tapping. Alt tapping is when you put your hands near the frets of your guitar and alternate which hand you are tapping with to cut the workload in between both of the hands instead of just using one. Next thing I will discuss in regards to tapping is slide tapping. Slide tapping is basically when you use your fretting hand, which is the hand that holds the guitar to fret the notes. And then when you're using your tapping hand, which is, would usually be on the strum bar, you slide across the fretboard with that one. And so you are tapping with your left or fretting, and then you're sliding with your right. You can think of it as the same as alt tapping, but just instead of alternating between tapping on one hand to the other, you are alternating tapping from one hand and sliding across the frets with your other hand. This method is used to hit some pretty crazy stuff. Its best use is for really fast trills, and also it can be used for really fast trips that would usually be too fast to alt tap, which I will talk about what those terms mean in a second. Although back in 2018, this method wasn't really used and barely even knew about really to the extent that it is today. And in this context, it wasn't known for being efficient for stuff like I have already listed. Nowadays, it is used a lot, however, unfortunately, it's looked down upon by some people. Next method on the list would be rake tapping. This is when you take two to four fingers on your tapping hand and in a raking motion, go up or down on a certain fret while your fretting hand accents whatever you need to do. This is used for hitting fast trills and not really other stuff. But if you're using, for example, four fingers, you will be doing two motions, but hitting five notes. So it's very effective. The last method goes off raking and it's called disjoint raking. It is basically raking, except instead of doing it all on one fret, you use your one hand on multiple frets. Also a very important game mechanic that is almost strictly Guitar Hero related is the process of anchoring. This works for all notes, but in this context, I'm going to be talking about tap notes. Anchoring is when you hold down the highest note of a sequence in order to hit those notes without having to individually press them. The best example I can give with this is a trill, and a trill is a type of pattern and I will talk about a few other patterns shortly. A trill is a pattern of notes that move back and forth between two notes. In this example, you can see after every single blue note, there's a red, and after every red, there's a blue. And then for other patterns, for example, trips, some people call them triplets. It's the same thing, but you add an extra note 
for three total. For quads, it's the same thing, but you add an extra note for four total. And for quince, it's the same thing, but you add an extra note for five notes total. In trips, quads, and quince, there's also a pattern called zigs, and some people call them zigzags, but it's hit the same as a normal trip, quint, quad, or whatever. But it's in a zigzag-like pattern, so instead of, say, four notes in a quad, it turns into seven. Trips, quads, and quince can also be used in chimney form, and it's basically a zig, except instead of alternating between zigs, there's a zig that you hit with your fretting hand, which would be your left if you're right-handed, and then a single note, which you hit with your right if you're right-handed. There are also reverse chimneys, which are just chimneys but turn the like opposite way, so you can hit them like you would a zig. Anyways, back to anchoring. As you can see, I'm never tapping down on the red here. I'm just holding it down, and as long as I hit the blue note in front of it and stay anchoring the red, the red note will keep hitting. Now, if I were to add in a green note in place of a blue note, I would have to move my finger to the green in order to hit the red, as the green note would be the highest on the fretboard in that sequence of notes. Now that we have the basics of how the game works, and more specifically how tapping works, we can finally introduce Clone Hero's most infamous section. On September 12, 2018, a composer in Charter, a Charter is someone who puts the notes in a song, their name was Archwick, uploaded a chart preview of the song Supernovae. It was composed and charted by Archwick in collaboration with Court Monch, Jarvis9999, and Sim Reality, also known as Supra, Pixel GH, Dead Shadow, Sydney, Meteograve, Sucky, Hyperbola, also known as Jacob, Digital Squirrel, Half Duck, and Aeon Bridge, who are all also composers and charters. This is what the Clone Hero community calls a mega collab due to so many people working on it. It was the end of 2018, Souls 4 hadn't even been FC'd yet. The song was basically impossible. Highly skilled tapping in the beginning of the song was not too bad until you get to the section Jarvis 9999's Revenge. It starts off with some pretty easy strumming and a bit of tapping, that is until you get to the hard part of the section. It started off with some easy trip zigs, then immediately goes into around 38 note per second trills, which is extremely fast to alt tap. For those who could alt tap them, if you're very fast, then good for you. But if you're not, you can disjoint rake them or slide them. The next part is some easy quad zigs directly into some fast rate tapping. After all of that goes into some fast quips. And then you get a tiny breather with some slow trills and some one handing. And then you're thrown right back to the sharks with some rake tapping with an immediate transition into fast trills and trips. And at the end it has a chord, which is really easy to miss on. A chord is when there are frets that you have to hit at the same time. And then after that, there are some fast sweeps and fast trill. Pretty easy, right? No. It's then pretty easy for top play from there on. You may run into a bit of trouble with the fast trills of Sydney Challenge or maybe the difficult ladder and singularity, but then you're given a short break. It's around 17 seconds. You happy? Well, you shouldn't be. You are then brought into a section named Inspired. It started with some pretty easy tapping, and then in the end you get to some trills, and then they get a bit fast, and then they get too fast. Do you remember how I was talking about how you have to be really fast to hit the trills in Jarvis's Revenge? Those were around 38 notes per second. These trills? 48 notes per second. There's an extremely, extremely, extremely small number of people who play this game that can all tap the full section, so the only chances you have are disjoint raking or sliding. You then immediately have to transition it into strumming at 18 notes per second. Thought you had a break? Think again. After all of that, you again have to immediately transition into 36 notes per second trills that you can rake for 722 notes. And then at the end of that, more 48 notes per second trills. But these ones you can rake tap. You then get a small break, which would be pretty easy strumming, some pretty easy tapping. That is until you get to Hyperbola's challenge. So there's something I forgot to mention when talking about chords earlier. You see, the chord in Jarvis's Revenge was a tap chord. Well, tap chords and strum chords do work a bit differently. When there's a strum chord, you're not allowed to anchor. You have to hit the exact note in that sequence. So at the beginning of Hyperbola's Challenge, there are chords in sets of two that you have to hit and then slide your finger back to green, then slide back to the chord, yada yada yada. 
There's a chord sequence, which is pretty simple for most people, but somehow it's the hardest thing in the song for me, so I don't know. Um, then there's some pretty entry-level tapping, some fast drumming with a short trill transition, and then it is the hardest part. There's solo strumming, which is when you have to delay the strum with your finger movement in order not to hit the hopo and send the strum, except it's inside of open notes, which only require you to hit the strum bar except you are not allowed to be pressing any other notes down when doing it. It's this sequence and it gets a tiny bit faster at the end and then it transitions into three tap quads and then it transitions into a fast six note strum sequence and then you guessed it, you transition back into tapping, except these are tap chords so you have to be a little bit precise which is kind of difficult. You then have mediocre skill gameplay until you reach the infamous supernovae solo. Solo A is decently easy, it's mainly just trills and quads with the difficulty being at the end which are some fast trills into an immediate strumming transition which would bring you into Supernova Solo B which is easiest of the solo sections. Um, it's entry level strumming and one handing, there are a bit of zigs at the end but it's really no biggie. And then you are welcomed by Supernova Solo C. This section starts off with quad chimneys that alternate with reverse quad chimneys, so after every normal chimney, you get a reverse one right after, and then it's some trip reverse chimneys, and then just normal trips, and then you repeat it all over again. And then after that, you get some sweeps, which are just, in this case, trips that sweep across the highway, then some slow trips, then some fast ones, and then you immediately transition into the strumming of solo D. Majority of this section is just some slow strumming, then near the end you get to some faster strumming, then there are two lines of really fast strumming, and after the final one, you have to immediately bring your strumming hand to the fretboard, which is something the Clone Hero community calls teleporting, and start, start all tapping. You then, at 14 minutes into an extremely difficult song, are faced with two of the most difficult sections in the song. Solo E starts off with some ladders, and then some sweets, and then some quad chimneys, yada yada yada, you get it. Not too difficult really for most top players, but then you get to the end. There is a super fast green yellow trill, then immediately after that you get some slow trips, and then you are faced with 64 notes per second trips. There's a single digit number of people after 6 years of the song being released that can hit those trips all tapping in a run of the section. The only thing you can do if you don't have that inhuman speed is to slide tap them. As I was talking about earlier, this cuts off good players from the mediocre ones because an entry level player will not be able to slide those, especially back then. Not really anyone could until later times. You then transition into the infamous Supernovae Solo F. It starts off with some decent speed trips and basically the same thing but in quad form. You are then introduced to an orange wall we call it, which is difficult for a lot of people but anyone with experience can hit it. Then you are brought to debatably the most iconic part of the most iconic tapping section in clone hero history. The fallout to RB trill. The fallout trill is a 42 notes per second alternating trill which got its name from the its appearance to a trill in a song named fallout. This can be all tapped. It up. Everyone's like, oh, the skill issue, skill issue. If yet again, you are extremely fast, but most players will never see that as a viable method. The only ways you could hit this are disjoint raking or, or sliding. Most people were not good enough at either to hit it, but even if they could hit it alone, they could not hit what was after. You are then hit with a 64 notes per second red blue trill. This has never been and most likely will never be all tapped even to this day. You have the option to slide it if you're fast enough, you can rake it or if you can meme rake which is basically raking up and down but that wasn't a method at this time. After you are brought to some easy hopos with a stupidly placed single strum note. Pretty entry level tapping from here on out, some decently fast quad zigs at the end, and just for the cherry on top, an immediate blue strum after the quad zigs that force you to hit the strum bar with your elbow. Just a few more notes and hooray, you've gotten through a run of supernovae. As I said earlier, this was obviously thought to be impossible. Fun for full runs, maybe a tech FC. It could be eventually possible, but for now, it's just not viable. For a while, that's all it was, just an impossible song.
Well, I couldn't find an exact date, but at some point in 2019, there were a few people that started to go for the section. Um, Pixel says that at first it was an alt tap slash rig challenge and Euclid, Les Cole, Jarvis, and Arch were all going for it. Euclid was the closest alt tappy and Arch was the only one to get it up raking. It was already a popular section among all the top players, even before Shmui and Nados started playing solo up by sliding it and brought that to the mainstream. There's a player that saw them going for it though, and he thought he would have his go at it. Enter Shmui. Shmui was an extremely good player, one of the best even. The thing with Shmui was that unknown to everyone in the community, he had been faking his accomplishments with splicing clips together and speed hacking. He was eventually caught three whole years later. He was caught and last year in 2023 came back to the community and showed that he really did have the skill. That's all I'll basically talk about that for right now, but I wanted to include him because if it wasn't real even, he was part of the history. Anyways, I couldn't find an exact date, but somewhere between late June and early July, Shmui became the first person to ever FC the section. He would be the person whose clip was shown in the community tech FC. However, the real first person to get it, which would be July 12th, 2018, would be Abyssin QC. His method was slide tapping the fallout trail and meme raking the red blue trail, which is probably the most common method today. He's really the person who made solo F start to blow up and he was the main reason it started to become a really popular section. Also the popularity of Shmoo's fake supernova FC on May 21st, 2021 really helped the population. That was it, supernova solo F was FC, but what's next? Side note from Future Reptar here, after talking with Edu who was in the community when Supernova got released, it actually never was thought of as a really impossible song. The Clone Hero private discord called The Bakery, which consisted of mostly top players, were trying to get a community tech FC of it. Also after fact checking, the sliding we know today was there back in the end of 2018, so it wasn't totally out of the picture, but it was just really starting to become prevalent. It took off more so in 2019, but still solo F when Supernovae was released was basically impossible. The second person to get it was a player named Ornish, and then after that, it started getting more and more popular. Ian, Chandler, King D, Friff all got it pretty quick. It would be a 4 hour long video if I talked about every single solo FFC, but around a year later, according to Nitro Awesome solo FFC comparison videos, as of August 19th, 2020, there were 16 or more solo FFCs, and then if you fast forward to May 17th of 2021, a little under a year later, there were over 40 FCs of it. Then obviously it kept getting hit more and more, and then on December 7th of 2021, a Clone Hero podcast invited all the players who have FC'd it. This podcast was called The Chadcast. It was hosted by Carney, Jared, and Shmui, and they had in their podcast over 30 of the FCers. Let's get it out of the way. Fog saturate, fellas. The keyboard god. Here we go. Fog? Are you there? Hi, stream! They interviewed each FCer that decided to join, and it was just a congregation of people who FC'd to low F. Me personally, I love this podcast. This was right around when I joined the community, but unfortunately, after this podcast, it seemed like Solo F started to die. People stopped caring about the section. Not everyone, but a lot of people just didn't see it as impressive as they used to. Then a month later, the date of January 13th, 2022 had arrived. Shmui was caught for faking majority of his accomplishments. I don't really know why this started, but at this point, people started hating on the section. It was at one point the most popular section for the community, but now it was just getting hated on. And going into the future, the reputation of the section kept getting lower and lower. I had always been a solo F lover, that's how people honestly know me. But then when I saw an FC with methods like this, I started to hate it too. At this point in time, a very small percentage of the people in the community care about a solo FFC. It is still very impressive, but the skill ceiling has been pushed so high that I don't think it will ever be seen in a positive way by the overall community ever again. The current world record for the fastest speed of hitting the section is held by Ian V. He has brought it all the way up to 160% speed. 
Are you just gonna play Steve to go to the server? That'd be what it's shit. And I thought I remember Leo having a 165% FC as well, but all I could find looking through his YouTube and Twitter was a choke in the trills before the quads. There's never been a section like Solo F since it's gained its popularity, but I hope that there one day will be. The biggest competitor has been Archrix Trial B from Megalodon, but it never reached what Solo F did. Guess Arch just knows how to make popular sections.